All right, Scooter with the Great Michigan Bush Company again. And today we're talking about the next uh, Great Michigan Bush Company flyout, and that's to the, uh, the Great American Eclipse. This eclipse is going to happen on April 8th, and there's a swath from Texas up through Maine. So it crosses the whole United States. I and several of us are going to be taking our planes. We're going to be uh, flying out to see the eclipse. I'll try to give updates on YouTube as that happens. Keep watching. I'll put on another video or two about viewing the eclipse and viewing the eclipse, you know, with an airplane. But right now, I just want to start out uh, with the reason that I'm flying to the eclipse. I've talked to a lot of pilots and they're flying to the eclipse because they can fly to the eclipse. It is a little quicker than driving. It's just south of the Detroit area where we are, about an hour. And they're looking at skipping traffic. I'm looking at flying to the eclipse for a different reason. The reason I'm looking at flying to the, the eclipse is to be versatile. To view the eclipse, you need clear skies. You need a bright, sunny sky. 50% clouds, not going to work. Uh, last eclipse back in 17, I had spoken with some people who got motels and they drove out to the Appalachians. Got a little darker when the eclipse happened and they thought it was in, you know, interesting and neat that it got uh, pitch black in the middle of the afternoon. But they didn't see the total eclipse. And the idea is to see that total eclipse, not the partial eclipse, but when the moon actually occults the sun and that corona just shines in the sky. Pictures do it absolutely no justice. It takes up five sun widths in the sky. It's massive, streams coming off the sun, crowds break out in spontaneous cheers. It's awe inspiring. So, the reason to fly is to get into the eclipse path and then be versatile, mobile enough that if the weather isn't good where you are, you can jump in your airplane and you can fly to another airport, land and see the eclipse. It's not to skip an hour drive or a two hour drive, but, uh, but actually use the aircraft as a tool, which is pretty neat for uh, aviators because we just get $100 hamburgers with them most of the time. And that brings up a, a, you know, an interesting point with this eclipse. If you look at the eclipse path and then you look at cold fronts as they come across the United States this time of year, they almost line up. It's on that uh, southwest to northeast path. So we're in a situation where we could have a cold front cover the whole eclipse path and few people, if any, see it. And then the other weather pattern problem we're facing is it's spring. Very cloudy. As a matter of fact, I, when you look at historical patterns, the northeast down to Toledo into o northern Ohio, we're looking at a 50-50 a shot. The chance of seeing the eclipse gets you know, better and better uh, the closer you get to the Texas-Mexican border. All the big eclipse chasers a year ago booked tickets into uh, Mexico. That's where the, the greatest chance is. But down in Texas, we have a 70% chance. Now, I've looked at historical data in satellite imagery as far back as I could, and there's never been a time, there has not been a year where on April 8th, there wasn't a clear spot in the U.S. So with most of the time it being clear in Texas and in Arkansas. But there was times when Texas and Arkansas were covered and Ohio was, was clear. So that's the reason for the airplane, is to dodge these weather patterns and uh, find the clear spot, find the bubble of high pressure and get there. Many airports are requiring reservations. Not all airports, but you know, if it has a, an IKO, a K in the front, they probably have reservations needed. You, can probably, you may be able to still get some reservations at these airports. The smaller airports, the three-letter identifiers, the private airports, they were open. Some airports don't even want pilots to attend at the airport, but they didn't put up notams about the airport being closed. Now, I have reservations at five airports, and I made multiple reservations or reservations for multiple airplanes because I know people are coming with us. So that's something to look at. Make sure that the airport you're looking to go to will allow you to land, and there's no notum, notum meaning it closed to transient traffic on the day of the eclipse. That may be a problem. As I say, I've had reservations at about six airports along the eclipse path, all the way from the Ohio area down into Texas, hoping I don't have to go to Texas, really hoping that I can see it somewhere in Indiana where, where we'll get uh, four minutes of totality. But it's, uh, it's all weather dependent.
what do you bring to the eclipse? Well, I treated this personally as an underwing camping event. Um, I'm bringing a sleeping bag, I'm bringing a tent, and uh, some just standard camping supplies. These airports all have facilities available to the pilots. There'll be water, there'll be uh, restrooms. Uh, some of them are providing cars. A, a lot of them are even providing an event with uh, outdoor vendors and uh, roped off areas. But everyone I booked that does allow the underwing camping so we can show up on the 7th and prepare and then leave on the 8th after the eclipse is over and start making our way back home, hopefully get home on the 8th. You are going to want to bring eclipse glasses. That way during the partial eclipse phase, you can look at the sun and watch the moon starting to occult the sun. And once the moon completely occults the sun, you take the glasses off. I know somebody last time who didn't take the glasses off, they missed the whole eclipse. Uh, the sun is not dangerous during totality. Uh, the sun's no more dangerous to look at during an eclipse than it is on an average day. It's just you can't ever stare at the sun. Uh, and that's where the eclipse glasses come in. You can watch that moon slowly move in front of the sun. It takes two hours from the first contact to the last contact, as they call it. So the transition's a little over two hours. That's why I'm flying to the eclipse. We have Great Michigan Bush Company uh, airplanes going out. Uh, if you have questions, leave them below. Um, if you decide to go, remember, call ahead before and make sure the airport is open and that you don't need reservations for it. And then look at weather patterns two or three days ahead and start refining your plans from a broad area to a, to a smaller area. And uh, you will have, hopefully, you will have success.